Hey, how's it going? Okay, coming to you from a different format. Uh, so I got my tablet hacked by somebody that hijacked my email, my Gmail, and I had to delete it because they were doing all kinds of weird transactions and I was getting all kinds of weird porn email and your email and mail enhancement emails and just weird stuff from Amazon, but it's like AM underscore OZ underscore and just weird, like it was just wrong. And and then it was like using my name, my actual name to order stuff and then I couldn't access the stuff. Like, I don't know what this person did, but they created like an alter email that was attached to my email and I was like, no. So I deleted the account. And then I guess it pissed this person off that I took back what was mine to begin with. And uh, they then locked me out of my own device. So I never use a password because I really cannot stand them. I and mean, I use them, but I just have like a panic attack every time I have to dream up yet another one. And that I also have to remember, or if I write it, okay, well, I don't like doing it. <laughs> so anyway... That is why I'm now using this phone, and I'm not really familiar with it, but I'm learning, so, you know, bear with me. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to talk about one of the Star Trek Universe shows, and it is the Enterprise series that stars Scott Bakula and also a number of other uh, well-known, or maybe not as well-known, but you might know their faces. I don't know, that's just my impression. Maybe they're really well-known, but I watch a lot of television, so... I don't need to digress about that. Let me get to the point. Uh, there will be spoilers. I, this is presented as entertainment. It's my opinion. It's not the end of the world. If you don't agree, you know, you want to tear me up in the comments, knock yourself out. If you, that's what you need to do, cool. Um, or you could just not watch. I don't mean to harm nobody, I just want to potty. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, and there will be spoilers. Whenever I do this, I'm just going to say there will be spoilers. I'm, that's just how I'm going to do it. Okay, <clears throat> so in the episode, the chief engineer, Trip Tucker, is working on some problem with the engines in the engineering bay, and there's a big explosion while he's on top of this big, gigantic... Really, it looks like a giant turbine to me, but... <laughs> yeah, anyway, it blows up with him on it, throws him across the bay, and knocks him into a coma. And so, it looks as though he may lose his life, and the doctor locates... Uh, in the course of looking for ways to heal and treat and hopefully cure him of his injuries, which involve severe neural damage uh, in his brain, which, you know, you're in a coma and you're, you, well, your whole body's pretty much messed up if your brain is, and that's the condition he's in, and it's uh, precipitous. It's, uh, you know, it's scary. You don't know, it's on the edge. You don't know if he's going to make it or not, or they don't know. Obviously, he's going to make it if you're watching this show, because he's one of the stars that would be like, no bueno if he was gone because he got blown up. So, yeah. <laughs> he's not going to die, but the characters have to go through that whole, it, well, you know, it's in the script. <laughs> but, um, so, while the, the doctor finds a cure, he finds a larva from a planet, uh, Larissia and the, I think that's what it is, and the Larissia and larva secrete a solution that uh, works well for healing in humans. So it's compatible. And while he's doing his re <laughs> research, <laughs> research, he comes across the information that if compatible, the larva will act as a symbiote with a human and it works out because again it's in the script that uh there's a compatibility and uh what they are able to do with the symbiote is create a reproduction of the original genetic material that in many ways if not every way it's the same, except for it has its own sentience, and so it's, it has its own personality. And it, 
experiences its own life as it progresses through it, uh, but it also remembers and feels all that Trip did. So <clears throat> it has a hard time separating itself from the Trip part of itself. Trippy, <laughs> no. <laughs> and so at one point, it, you know, it is asking these existential questions as it grows up. Uh, through its 15-day lifespan, by the way. Uh, who am I? Where did I come from? Where are my mom and dad that I remember? And, you know, it's it's got, you know, like this dual personality in its mind. It's, you know, kind of sounds like a walk-in. Look it up. <laughs> Stick it in your search bar and boop, 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 boop. Um, yeah, walk-in. So it seems a lot like the description of one of those. Star Trek seems to have a lot of those on Deep Space Nine. There's the trill, and it has many. It has like humanoids that end up with many lives of other. Well, it's a symbiote too. Symbiote, symbiote. Well, whatever mouth. Either way, I think you get it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a thing, and a lot of walk-ins, <laughs> walk in and out of there, like revolving person door. Anyway, back to the Enterprise series, though. This particular symbiote, 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 we'll go with that. It uh, starts to question its existence, and it wants Tripp's life to be its own, and the captain has to explain that it is, it is not his to have. He experiences it because of the biological situation, but it has its own consciousness and its own, or his own, um, experience. And so, the symbiote's name is Sim. Oh, cheesy. I, I was all thinking simulation of the original and similitude as in the title, but oh, Sim for symbiote? That is just lazy. Anyway, I would have never let that by if <laughs> I worked any kind of continuity on any show. <laughs> so there, I guess I told you, producers of <laughs> the Extinct series, <laughs> what do you call it? Defunct? Extinct, defunct, you know what I mean. To move on. Sorry about that. Shaky waviness. My knee hit the thing. Alright, that's enough about that. It basically, he, it, Sim goes through some emotions. It goes through, like, the the emotions you go through when you lose someone to a death, you know? But it's itself. It's himself. And, you know, uh, it's funny. Or it's not funny. It's kind of interesting and really good, actually. I like the way they did it. The way they helped. They helped. The way they uh, constructed uh, the experience that he was going through. And and the ways that they got him to understand who he was and who he wasn't, you know. Uh, and as he's working his way through the stages of his own death, pretty much, he at one point has like a crisis and a, a rebellion, which you would expect at some point through a human's life. And this one, you know, it only lives to be 15, 15 uh, days old. You know, so that's like birth to adulthood in 15 days. Somewhere with the human portion, it doesn't seem illogical to expect a, a bit of a rebellion in there at some point. And, and it does happen. <clears throat> and so it almost runs off with a shuttle because the there also is a possible experiment that could expand or procedure that could extend its life and but then it's like yeah the captain has to explain yeah but see if we extend your life then trip has to die and the symbiote's like well if you save my life then you'll be saving him through both of us and he's then the captain's like no see because we need to harvest the tissue that we need from you for trip because Trip has to live on, see? Because if he doesn't get the tissue, well, you're going to die in six days because of the experimental procedure to help him possibly extend his life, Sim's life, they end up saying no to because... <clears throat> well, I'll let you watch the show if you want more detail than that. 
but eventually he gets he comes to the understanding that um he's not going to get to do that and then if he doesn't go on and live his destiny basically and donate the necessary tissue for a trip to survive uh be then the ship, the people on the ship, because of the problem that they're having, because there's always a problem <laughs> in these episodes, otherwise no action. <clears throat> but if they can't put the tissue from the symbiote that's going to die in six days, or whatever it is, when they have discussion, the discussion, then everybody's going to die, and including the symbiote. <laughs> experimental treatment or not because of the condition that's going on around them they need trip's mind and trip's ability to maintain the Ooh. <laughs> the structure of their orders uh you know for their mission in space that was a terrible explanation that's the best i could do because you saw my brain break right there right <laughs> okay so <clears throat> You know, he goes through his little rebellion, this very momentary, he like shuts off, Sim does, he shuts off like all of the controls to the engineering bay and he makes to sneak off as one of the shuttles, like run away, like, I'm just gonna go, <laughs> steal the car and run off, <clears throat> but he ends up stopping himself and Captain Archer goes running down to the bay to be all, what the F are you doing, man? <laughs> And, because he's, like, mad. Like, well, don't be running off with this tissue. We need you for this. You're, that's your importance, basically. It's the conversation they end up having once the captain arrives in the bay and Chip says, yeah, I was all ready to do it. And then I realize, well, where the hell was I going to go? I don't want to be trapped in a shuttle with no bathroom facilities for the remaining days of my existence. And that causes an epiphany, I guess, and gets him to that last stage of acceptance. And he does accept that, you know, he's had a good life. He's had the experience of trips, memories, and feelings. And then he's had his own original ones of his very own. And he comes to the conclusion, hey, you know, I've actually had a pretty good life. And uh, that's the final stage, the acceptance. And he really... You know, it's cool. Like, I really love what they did there. It's very nice. Very nice. Um, so, you know, once he accepts his destiny, because, you, you know, I think the inspiration was, I don't know if I got to this or not. I, I think I tried to and just got digressed to myself away from it. But at one point, the captain and he have a conversation uh, when he's like a younger age, stage of his life, like boyhood, sort of. Uh, the captain says that he always has known that to be the captain of a starship is what he was destined to do. And by the time Sim makes it to his acceptance of his situation, he understands that his life is, he's living his destiny. That I mean, that's how it is really if you get all deep and understand it on a certain level what it is to live your destiny. I mean, that's what you do. That's what you do. <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> so, you know, Trip survives, and they get out of, you know, he survives to wake up and save them, and, you know, part of it was done, no, I guess Sim pretty much, like, figured it out between his own contribution and what he could glean from his tripness and it, yeah okay so further commentary on this is Star Trek and media in general I feel like tell us a lot of things they inform us they misinform us they play heck with our emotions you know just manipulate us all over the place they give us a chance to shut off our minds and just zone out, which, gosh, I mean, however you got to do it, at some point we all got to do it, you know, and it's just a way to reset, refresh the system, the human operating system. It's one of the ways. Um, a lot of people don't like to do it because of all of the programming. I mean, I'm 
it's, they call it programming for a reason. It's actually doing that to you. I think the trick is to not be overtaken by the programming, is to remain as aware of it happening to you as possible and, you know, just discern what's, what you're getting from it, you know, seeing what it is. And uh, in this case, as with, uh, like, well, with any media, I think you can find these aspects that you can apply to your life whenever the information came across the transom, so to speak, in whatever time period. I'm finding I could watch some really old stuff, like, as in black and white material, you know, before the, we had color stuff on the screens. Like, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old material. And still find things that you can parallel with our life now. But I'll stick with the Star Trek for this instance. And I will say, go to the original Star Trek and look at what do they have? What is their technology? You can find laptop computers with complete with a monitor. You can find their what they call the pad, which is our tablet, handheld tablet, computer. And also their communicators are cell phones this you can't it's unmistakable they put it in front of us like this is the possibility or this is coming down the pike for you so get yourself used to it and that's a form of them giving you information i believe and i think that it should be noted that again use the star trek saga space opera saga with, you know, you got the military component that connotes proper behavior, things, you know, hope, uh, you can admire aspirational figures and situations that you can imagine yourself in. It's thickened with this stuff. And it's that way for a reason. It's both to, you know, <laughs> broadcast it at us and for us to absorb and process, you know, and then how, what you do with it when you go forward after you've uh, attained your information or received your transmission, that's a whole other digress or like a series of digresses and I'm not going to go there. But um, I just wanted to point out that it is... A lot of the technology and things that we have in our lives today come because they were created in the military, which is also the government. And if you pay attention, Hollywood military, Hollywood slash military slash government kind of are all of the, of the same group. Like, they're not separate, you know. They have different aspects to their personalities, but boy, they are pretty darn closely related, if not... Well, incestuously, other digress <laughs> for another day. But you just notice that they show us these things, and boy, don't we sure have them now in our life. And that goes completely down to fashion, to lifestyle. I mean, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay, I guess that about covers it. And this is take two. I had to do the first one because I had all kinds of errors that I was saying and then there was some nastiness that just didn't need to be there I'm trying to get away from that because it's not healthy for you it's not healthy for me there are many ways to discourse without damaging one another okay thank you and good night enjoy <laughs>